here at Gabriel Ranch headquarters. Uh, this is basically the storefront for our cattle operation. When I say that, all of the cattle that we market come through this piece of property right here. Angus cow is our cow of choice. It's the animal that does the best job as far as being a good maternal cow on grass, uh, being a great mother, very high in maternal traits. This cow also does a very good job when these calves come off and hit the marketplace that they provide a very good product in the feedlot for efficient cattle that convert well and produce one of the best protein sources there are for people to consume and eat. Look at that calf running across it. <laughs> The number one thing, of course, is care of the cattle, the livestock. Um, feed, water, make sure they have ample supply of what they need for feed resources, whether it be in the summer times when we're grazing pastures, or in the winter times when we have supplemental feed. Water, huge. You always have to have fresh water sources for these. three main things that add value make these things for what we do and one is data we measure everything on these animals we measure how big their calf is how quick they breed back we pull DNA samples and have a, a set of box scores on these we measure their EPD data so we can put these things in a spreadsheet when we're in the office the second thing that's very important to us is the story the story includes every all the marketing promotion our reputation of the product we produce how we deal with clients from this ranch that's the story everybody wants to know where their beef come from and how that story works and then the third thing that's so important is phenotype which is looks nobody wants to own an, an ugly one and typically an ugly one won't perform yeah, sure. so that's what we sort for. So if you put it in those three basic categories, it's pretty easy to cut through everything that we need to do. Another huge thing for us, I'm sure everybody's heard about right now, the buzzword of sustainability. There's a lot of different definitions of what sustainable is. For us here at Gabriel Ranch, sustainability is also being not only great cattlemen, but also being great stewards of the land. You don't just really have one role. As much as we have to try to define and get people in the spots they need to be in, we also have to be versatile. And that discipline is probably the biggest thing in our job, is how to stay disciplined to take care of your job and do your job, but also be able to help the other guy or the other division as you need to. Um, so we started by looking at the cattle pen. So this is actually where the live animals are received. Those animals are held here until they are slaughtered. So they'll come in, um, they'll be held here for no more than 24 hours and then moved onto our slaughter floor. Uh, once they enter into the slaughter floor, they will be mechanically stunned and then exsanguinated, um, which I think it's important to note that the entire process is extremely humane. Um, all federally inspected facilities actually go through a minimum of one humane handling audit per month, uh, just to make sure that all animals are treated fairly and equally um, and that our process is as um, wholesome as we say it is. They will enter into our first cooler, which is actually our initial chill cooler. Um, so carcasses are rolled in there and they are held there for typically the first 24 hours after slaughter. Only the animals that were slaughtered um, on that same day can be hanging in that cooler. Um, the reason for that is, is we have to drop the core temperature of those carcasses really 
quickly. That cooler is about 33 degrees. It's important that those carcasses are stored at the correct temperature. Um, so we will actually come back up here in the morning, even though tomorrow's Saturday, um, and check the temperature of those carcasses to make sure that they have chilled appropriately before they can be rolled into our main storage areas. Once they are rolled into the main storage areas, again, those coolers are kept at about, about 33 to 35 degrees. After that, they're rolled into our processing area, our main processing area. That processing area is kept um, below 50 degrees. Um, so there's kind of a, a rule in the food manufacturing business that you don't want um, beef above a certain temperature for a certain amount of time. It's all about time and temperature. Um, so by maintaining the temperature of that room, making sure it's cold in there, just again helps us protect the integrity of that beef product. So after it's processed, we'll move it into the initial cooler until that processing is complete and it's been checked off um, for quality control. And then it'll, it will be moved into our storage freezer. That freezer is about negative 20 degrees. Um, we want the temperature of that product to be below zero. Um, again, just for the same reasons. We wanna protect the integrity of that food product. We wanna protect the integrity of the packaging. Uh, we wanna make sure that everything that leaves here is a safe, wholesome product that you can take home and feed your families. So every spring we have our Gabriel Ranch annual cattle sale here on site. Um, we've got a sale barn that we're able to hold two or 300 head of cattle and we will put them through a live auction and we'll bring folks out and um, give them a great experience. They'll get to not only taste the meat, but they'll get an opportunity to buy some of the cattle that we've uh, invested our time into and raised and taken care of. It's a fun time, it's a hard time getting everything ready for the sale. Uh, I always tell everybody it's kind of like Christmas. You do all your shopping and decorating and you spend hours and days and days and then, you know, two hours later it's over. And that's kind of the way our sale is. It's, it's a lot of work getting into it, but that's when all your friends come in and you get to see everyone and talk to everybody and then you have a great sale and, and it's an exciting time for us. My dad had cattle. He and the neighbor would slaughter one, skin it, dress it, and do the whole thing. First time we harvested cattle, I was probably 10 or 12 years old. And then probably got more into it with my father-in-law, kind of when we got into the meat business. Every Sunday, we would haul three steers to Mineola Pack to be harvested. Except back in those days, we didn't do round bells like you do now, we did square bells. Ranching is something you've got to love because it's hard work, you know. Uh, it's not that you can do that eight to five. Ranching is it's when you gotta do it, you gotta do it. We're always clearing land. There's always land to be cleared. And there's always fences to be built. So it, it's just something that you never ever have a day that there's not something you can do. It's a wonderful life. You meet a lot of great people. We have friends now all over the United States and uh, it's a great community to be a part of. It's a great life, but you gotta love ranching and I love ranching. We want people to, uh, you know, not respect the name, but, but like us and trust us for who we are. It's a wonderful thing to 
you know, to be able to grow up in that and then have your kids and grandkids involved.